Shopping for a new MacBook can be a daunting task, especially if you are not a tech-savvy person. There are many MacBooks to choose from and it's really easy to get lost in Apple's marketing and make the mistake of buying the wrong thing. In this video, I will explain to you 7 mistakes to watch out for when buying a MacBook so your purchases will always be bullseye. The first mistake is not considering the size. MacBooks come in a range of sizes from the ultra-portable MacBook Air to the larger and more powerful MacBook Pro people often tend to underestimate the importance of the laptop's size, thinking, for example, that even a smaller machine will do the trick. Before you start shopping, think about how you will be using your MacBook and how important size is to you. Do you need portability or do you need a more stationary machine? Smaller MacBooks, like Air, are thinner and lighter than MacBook Pros and are great for people who travel or move a lot. They take less space in the back and are just easier to carry around. However, a smaller screen in MacBook Airs and 13-inch Pros can make it harder to see and read text as well as make it more difficult to multitask with multiple windows open at the same time. Smaller screens are great for portability but can be too small for people who need to get serious work done. On the other hand, a larger display such as the 14 and 16 inch screen on the MacBook Pro can make the laptop less portable and harder to carry around. Taking such big and chunky laptops to a restaurant will be less convenient, so keep that in mind. On the plus side, a larger screen can also make it easier to see and read text as well as allowing you to have multiple windows open at the same time without feeling cramped. So ask yourself, how much real estate do you need and how often will you carry your Mac around and then make a decision on size. The next mistake people make is not considering the ports you need. I know this may sound like a made up mistake, but often people overlook such a thing as port selection. They buy a MacBook Air, come home and find out that they can't connect anything to it. No external display, no hard drive, no mouse, nothing. So they go to the store and buy a dongle. These dongles can cost all the way from six bucks to a few hundred. Plus, dongles make expensive and good-looking MacBooks feel incapable of doing even basic things such as plugging an external display. Think about devices you may need to connect to your laptop. Will that be a plethora of chunky USB-A drives or a bunch of screens, data storage units or an Ethernet cable? Or you don't need to plug anything because you have everything in the cloud. Port selection may seem like a small issue that can easily be mitigated and ignored, but small issues really add up. One day you're noticing the absence of HDMI on your MacBook Air, and another day you are going to the store to buy a dongle spending $100 on it. Current MacBook Airs and 13-inch Pro have only two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4s and a headphone jack, and that's it. Pro models, on the other hand, have three Type-C ports, HDMI port, an SD card slot, and a headphone jack. This makes Pro models much more versatile. I know that buying a $50 dongle is cheaper than paying five or $600 extra for the Pro machine, but ports are only part of everything you get. So just think about the ports, okay? The third common mistake is not considering the budget. One of the biggest mistakes people make when shopping for a MacBook is not considering their budget. MacBooks can be quite expensive and it's easy to get caught up in all the cool features and end up spending more than you can afford. Before you start shopping, take a moment to consider how much you're willing to spend and stick to that budget. Having a budget in mind can help you narrow down your options and choose a laptop that fits your needs and your budget. Additionally, setting a budget can help you avoid overspending and ensure that you have enough money left over for other important expenses. I know that you most likely have to balance between the price and your needs, but it's a necessary step. Surely you can pay $1,000 for the base M1 Air, but will it be enough for you or do you really need to spend $2,000 on a Pro MacBook when you are only planning to type documents and watch movies? Budget is extremely important especially when buying a MacBook. Apple is the king of advertising. They can literally sell a bottle of water to a drowning man. But you need to choose the maximum amount you're comfortable to spend on a laptop and stick to it. It can be $1,000 or $2,000, but you shouldn't let yourself go over it or you might regret later about paying extra with no reason. Four, unclear vision of personal needs. Different people have different needs when it comes to their laptops, so it's important to think about what you need your MacBook to do 
before you start shopping. Apple offers a variety of spec options to choose from and by carefully assessing your needs, you can cut down unnecessary spendings. But it's important to understand that buying a MacBook is an investment in your future. You need to account for your future needs and not for what you are doing right now. For example, if you plan to use your MacBook for graphic design, you want a model with a high resolution display and a powerful processor, such as the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pros. On the other hand, if you need a laptop for basic tasks like browsing the web and checking email, you may be able to get by with a less expensive model with less powerful specs such as the M1 or M2 MacBook Airs. Being aware of personal needs is crucial, especially if you are not planning to upgrade a MacBook every year, most likely it's a purchase for five years, so you better make it right. What do you want to do in five years? Will the M1 Air be enough or maybe a 14-inch Pro model will suffice? better. I personally have friends who bought the MacBook Airs but regretted it later. They wanted to save some cash without considering the rising need for performance and now they're stuck with a laptop that doesn't allow them to spread their wings. At least until they sell those Macs and buy more powerful ones. If you want to make the purchase a good, financially efficient venture, you better consider your needs now and in five years. Another thing about personal needs is understanding which apps are you intending to use. Productivity apps are good, but you shouldn't forget about monitoring and Mac monitoring apps. You may have noticed that you have too many files piling up or your Mac is running hot and slow. That may be the sign of a desperate need for a reliable MacBook management tool like CleanMyMac X. The sponsor of today's video. Deleting files, programs, installers, and all that junk can be done quickly and reliably without leaving any residual files. With this app, you can manage your battery, its charging status, charge, temperature, and more. If you want, you can check how your CPU and GPU are doing, how loaded they are, etc. The app even lets you monitor malware, which is extremely important. Scam is literally everywhere and you gotta stay protected. Personally, I I also like the interface, it's sleek and intuitive, offering a lot of useful data in a very user-friendly form. And this month, the team of CleanMyMac X will launch a new deal, Christmas sale 2022 from December 19th until December 23rd. During these five days, you will be able to snatch the app with a 30% discount. It can be a great Christmas gift for yourself or your loved ones. So be sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Five, choosing a small amount of RAM or memory. Memory. This mistake is a logical continuation of the previous one. You may think that previously I was talking about choosing the size and the chip inside, but you also can't forget the memory. The amount of unified memory, which acts both like RAM and the GPU memory that a MacBook has, can affect its performance. The more unified memory you have, the more apps you can run at once, the more tabs in Chrome, more Safari you can keep open, all that. For example, MacBook Airs, both M1 and M2, come with 8 gigs of unified memory by default. And believe me, that memory isn't enough for anything power intensive. The system eats around 4 to 5 gigs, leaving 3 to 4 gigs for the graphics and apps. This amount was enough in 2015, but in 2023, I seriously recommend you bump it up to at least 16 gigs. Getting 16 gigs is more of a future-proofing since you can't upgrade the unified memory later, it's soldered in, so what you buy is what you get. I know that paying 200 bucks extra for 8 more gigs of memory isn't something you want to do, but it's a necessary sacrifice. Trust me, if you put two machines side by side, one with 8 gigs and one with 16 gigs, the difference will be night and day. Additionally, you may want to consider the amount of storage you get. It will determine how much space you have for storing files, photos, videos, and other data. Yes, you can deal with this problem by buying an external SSD, but do you really want all that hassle? 256 is the lowest amount Apple sells, and if you're aiming to store files on your Mac, you will run out of space fast. Additional 256 gigs cost $200 more, and if we take the M2 Air, the memory and storage upgrade will give us a $1,600 machine, plus $50 for a good dongle, it's dangerously close to the refurbished 14-inch MacBook Pro. 6. Choosing Pro over Air and vice versa. From my previous words, you might have gotten the impression that I'm advocating for buying Pro models, but 
that's not it. I'm advocating for making smart, well thought out decisions. Some people don't actually need all that power that MacBook Pro gives and they will be good with a MacBook Air, but instead they buy Pro MacBooks without considering everything. So they are paying 2K when they could have paid 1200. The same goes to MacBook Air buyers. Some of those people who buy Airs in reality need a pro laptop. They need more RAM, more storage, better screen and more power, but they're deciding to cheap out and buy the cheapest MacBook. Don't make the same mistake. It's important to do your own research and carefully consider your needs before making a purchase. This can help you avoid buying a MacBook that doesn't meet your needs or has features that you don't need. Don't buy a MacBook Pro because it has the features you don't need. Buy the MacBook that will suit your needs the best and not the one Apple says is the right one to buy. Seven, buying used or unofficially refurbished Macs. And probably the biggest mistake you can make is buying a used or uncertified refurbished MacBook. Buying a used or unofficially refurbished MacBook can be risky because you don't have the same level of protection as you would if you bought the laptop new. For example, a used MacBook will not have a warranty. So if something goes wrong with the laptop, you will be responsible for the cost of any repairs. The same goes for the unofficially refurbished Macs. Additionally, a used or unofficially refurbished MacBook might not be in the same condition as a new one, and it may not function as well or last as long. Refurbishing companies might use unoriginal parts and do the replacement of components poorly, leaving room for potential errors and faults. You want to be sure that your new expensive MacBook will perform as intended. So I would recommend you to buy either new or officially refurbished Macs straight from Apple. Apple offers many refurbished Macs with new batteries, screens, and bodies. Basically, you're gonna buy a new laptop. Additionally, you may be eligible for a student's discount, which can shave 10% off the price. If you're not a student, you most likely know someone who is a student and is eligible for discounts. There are many ways to save money while buying MacBooks, so please don't try to get the cheapest deal in the world because you might get either scammed or disappointed. Official, official, and only official. So this is my take on the most common mistakes people make while buying a MacBook. Try avoiding them and you will make the right purchase for sure. Think carefully, consider everything, and you will not be disappointed.